Hello everyone, this is Neko71 for the design secret of this 6x6 off-road truck. We will do a bit different this time. Indeed, I have received this kit from Lily Eye, which is my 6x6 off-road truck, but with alternate Chinese brick. And so, I will use this kit to show you how the model is created and how it works. So, the kit comes in a box with visual on it. Too bad the piece count and the electronic info are not good, but this is not a big point, it will be corrected. Inside the box, you will find the parts in plastic bags, as well as the electronics and a QR code to access the instruction. As usual, I sort out the part in my IKEA drawer, open the instruction and we are ready to start building. We will start by the central chassis, where there is two speed gearbox and the reinforced CV join to transmit the power to the axle. You can see the gearing reduction composed of black and tan gears. If you want to modify the speed or the torque of the model, you can change it as long as it does not collide with the chassis. You can see the central suspension arm on the front axle and you can already spot a half stud offset here which will be used later. Then we start with the interesting part, the axle. First with the front. Here is the structures of the front axle. You can see the use of the toggle connector which is half a stud deep to use the CV join which has only two studs of the length, so it will have been too short with a regular connectors. And the ray front CV joint will have been too big. We add the first suspension arm, upside down as you can see, which is usually not good because it can be disassembled easily with weight, but we will see later how I overcome this. The earth of the axle, the main shaft. Composed of heavy CV joint in this particular connector, which use of the lift arm with both an axle to create the pivot point. This building technique enables the use of the AV CV join, which is usually too big to fit the regular connector with only one stud clearance. The use of the lift farm with bus enables also to have space to the knuckle rotation without touching the suspension arm, as the lift farm is a bit smaller than a stud. Very useful. I have not invented this, but the oldest occurrence are from Apachai Apachai, so credit to him even if he does not know if he was the first. On the center of the shaft, you can see again a toggle connector which is used with a free rotating 20 tooth gears. It is used to brace the 12 tooth gearing on the both sides to handle more easily the torque deformation. This bevel gearing is mounted on U-shaped holder which is not fixed to the axle so it can rotate freely on the shaft and act as a join without the need to put a CV join after it which gains space. I see this the first time from Guinness V, but the ID is older and I foot in from Brick Lab 2006. I add then the steering rod, placed at 4 studs distance instead of 3 stud, to use the full travel of the rack and pinion, and so the full motion of the servo motors, to avoid it forcing in head stop. Then, doubling the support beam to provide better stability on the axle, as the pivot point is only fixed on one side above. More half bin and connectors to fix everything in place and then I add the center toe ball of the axle where it will be connected to the main suspension arm on the chassis. Last trick is to use this bar with toe ball that I put into the other toe ball socket which handle the suspension arm. This combination prevents the underneath toe ball to be easily dismantled under the weight but it works only with recent pin with toe ball since 2001 as the oldest one has a square hole and not round. To finish, I had the springs fixed on the suspension arm rather than the axle to have greater travel and softer suspension, but also because it reduced the buckling of the springs by using only with the force in the direction of the two bracing hole, not like the Lego Zitros for instance. We can marry then the axle with the chassis with the different locking point, three suspension arm with one at the center plus two springs, and you can see why there is a half stud offset on the spring mounting point to compensate the late of it to be levered compared to the rear wheel. A last trick on the front axle which is interesting is concerning the steering operation. On the axle there is a CV joint which is half stud recess as shown before but on the chassis I have not enough room to put another CV joint to create the wall shaft. So I use an oscillating gearing by using bevel gearing. It is mounted on an articulated frame with a 20 tooth blue above, so the movement can be transmitted while the oscillation remains, creating a sort of compact CV joint vertically. This idea is coming from Zero Brick for a truck trial transmission a long time ago, first time seen on brick shelf. In turn, the gearing and axle of the fake engine, which is taken from the motor in the middle of the chassis. 
We continue with the chassis, adding beam, pin connector and the gearbox control. And there is a fake engine axle between. I used two red changeover catch on both sides of the axle, held in place by four stud axle with stop, and operate manually on each side. After completing the chassis, we start the other interesting drivetrain part, the rear axle. This is a tandem axle, so we will build two axles. More to seeable element is how I mounted the tow ball suspension arm vertically instead of horizontally, for instance on my Western Star truck. It will be used to create a ball junction between the axle and the oscillating arm, which will be composed of axle, joiner and pin ball. Kudos for LEGO V94 for the ID, which enable to have more compact walking beam suspension. The second interesting thing is the presence of the 2x2 cylinder in the drive shaft. As it uses a half triangle to reinforce the gearing with a heavy CV join, it remains only half a stud to attach the 12 tooth gearing, so the 2x2 cylinder prevents it to pop out easily. Here is a gear which will drive the secondary axle which is pretty similar except being mirrored. You can see here all the connecting rods necessary for the axle, four on the side to link together the two rear axle, two long ones to attach to the chassis which will lock in place the axle tandem longitudinally, and a power rod to stabilize the lateral movement during the suspension travel. Here is the oscillating beam with a central hole to attach to the chassis where the wall tandem will be articulated and ends with ball to connect on each side. Then we build the other axle and we can marry them and then attach to the chassis. You can see the travel suspension as well as the crossing with a very good bracing, better than my western star thanks to the lower position of the oscillating beam and all the connecting rods which help to stabilize the axle tandem during its travel. I had the motors, one L on each side, with spur gearing that can be easily changed and with a bin to prevent gear cracking. Then, the center of the chassis with long beam and finally the battery box, which is quite big but fit well with the ER reservoir. Of course, you can replace by buoys or other system. If it can fit the PF battery box, more of the other solution can fit. A Control Plus Hub can fit with Exceeding was stood in 8 in the bed, but the Control Plus L motors can not fit without modifying the wheelbase due to the length. Here is the servo motor for the steering, placed inside the cabin between the seats, which drive the blue gear with the oscillating gearing underneath, as seen previously. Surprisingly, this system has not many play, less than I expected, with a good functioning of the return to zero, despite the gearing and the CV join. And, at the middle of the instruction, as usual, as soon as possible, I add the wheel to test it and enjoy the functioning when there is not the bodywork, thing that I prefer that adding at the very end of the instruction. We build next some aesthetic elements, such as the reservoir which steps, which use the motor body as the bodywork, battery, air reservoir and guard rail, which hold the easily removable knob to operate the manual gearbox. Then, with the front bumper, seat, a bit of interior and engine accessories detail, and we start making the fake engine. It is based on the CAT V8 I have done for my Kodiak, with a yellow construction using pre-quarter pin in connector to hold the two sides of the V engine. Then, the crankshaft and the red piston, a fan, and we have finished. The engine is quite compact, I think more than a regular solution with the new yellow piston and came from LEGO, and of course smaller than the big 2x2 cylinders. As usual, since some creations, I like to have easily removable engine. So, the engine is connected to the chassis using frictionless elements and remain on the tow ball on the front. We build next the front grille, which will also hold the side panel of the hood, and we see for the first time some color, a red orange yellow strip. Fun fact, I have made many testing regarding the color gradient and the way it is built, with red, orange, yellow or yellow, orange, red for instance. In white for instance, you can invent the pattern to keep the U progression. The hood used the same construction as my Western Star truck, with different proportion of course, by using toggle connector to angle both sides and hide the line with a till. The hood is fixed to the grille and so can be open and rest on the axle to have a slight angle rather being horizontal. It includes a head stop with a pin on one side, which acts as a partial stop that you can overcome easily to open at 90 degrees angle if necessary. The grille can be separated open it, but it is more likely due to the construction than unwanted features. In fact, there is a recessed part under the hood to accommodate the sticking oil cap of the engine. 
Then we continue with the mud guard which has the headlight in it and are slightly angled with a connector to not collide with the hood and we start building the cabin. This is a pretty standard build with beam for the chassis and connector on the side to hide the hole in order to have the side of the cabin as smooth as possible. The classic windshield composed of teal and curvy slope the back exhaust fixed with Alstut to fit the size of the 2x2 cylinders and we finish with the door which have tails on the top for smooth design and with some detail like side mirror which use a combination of bar and clips. We have nearly finished, next is the bed. First with the classic red and white pattern on the side with teal to have smooth look and the end roller at the bed like on the oil field bed. But I also had a sideboard bed in dark bush grey to enhance a bit the color variation as I did not include a winch. This sideboard bed is built in one piece with a side which can be open and use the large amount of teal to finish the top surface. Then it is held in place on the bed using frictionless element so the sideboard bed can be easily removable, maybe too easily if you manipulate a lot the truck. So you can replace by friction pin if you want and we have done. This is the result, 42 cm long, 1 to 20 scale, for 1500 parts with a lovely 80s look. It took me about 10 hours to build and it was surprisingly pleasant, especially as I do not like following instructions most of the time, I prefer created, but I have to, to verify the construction anyway. Regarding the off-roading ability, you can refer to the showcase video to see in detail, they are quite good considering the size of the model, not having differential help a lot in combination of the efficient suspension. The only limitation will be the ground clearance due to the size of the wheel. Overall it is a nice truck with cool strip pattern, pleasant building and compatible with many sources for the electronic, so you can customize as you want. I have ever tried some 1 inch RC tire that I have purchased, which is very good looking but a bit sticky for indoor. Regarding Lady Kit, especially the part, they are good, colors are consistent, part friction is much higher than Lego, it can be hard sometimes, but this is consistent on all the parts, so some people will prefer it over Lego, some other don't. The electronic is working good without proportional control, not a single part was missing, but I have only a concern about the EV CV joint. Some are good, some others are too tight and so pop out under stress or are hard to rotate while turning. I have told the lady team about that and they are working on it to figure out. If you receive a kit with defective CV join, the best is to contact them to get a replacement part or use LEGO ONE in the meantime. If you are interested by the model, the pictures, instruction, part list or the kit, please check the link in the description. I hope you like this kind of format where I mix a sort of building review with a design secret. I take inspiration from Racing Brick video as this is a type of video I like to see. So let me know what do you think. Take care, play well, bye.